Hey guys, and welcome to my combat rule guide for 5.4. Uh, I'll go through some of the basics, and this is a beginner guide for anyone who's looking to play a combat rogue. Uh, these are your main spells. you got Sinister Strike, Revealing Strike, Slice and Dice, and Eviscerate. I'll go through them in more detail later. Um, but for now, I'm going to go through the talents that are the best, or most useful, I'd say, uh, for raiding as a combat rogue. Now, for the first tier, you want to get Shadow Focus, because this allows you to get a nearly free ambush every two minutes and at the start of the fight, and I'll talk about that later, um, into more detail. But the next tier, Nerve Strike is useful if you need to stun any adds. Combat Readiness is probably the best one, or the most useful, because it's just a nice, uh, a nice um, defensive cooldown that you can use to help out your healers. Uh, in the third tier, Leeching Poison and Cheat Death do have their uses. Uh, cheat Death, if you need to soak anything, Leeching Poison does have a bit of healing. But um, Elusive Nerf is probably the most useful, and they're probably the one you want to use the most of the time. Well, because you, it, redu you know, it reduces um, all damage taken by 30% when you use Fate. So, like, it's um, Faint is a really useful ability to be using quite a lot. I'll talk about that later. Um, Next tier, Shadow Step is probably the most useful. Burst of Speed can be used, uh, but Shadow Step is an instant movement instead of you know, moving really fast. I suppose they, they do both have the uses, but Shadow Step is the most useful. Um, on the next tier, Pilot Poison is good for stunning like when you against loads of ads, um, as it'll you know it'll paralyze loads of them. Prey on the weak is good if you need to stun one or two ads, you know, because uh, or you know not not loads of ads at the same time. Um, for the next tier. Anticipation is probably the best one, as it allows you to store more than the maximum of 5 combo points. Um, it's useful, because uh, later on, like let's say you're using Adrenaline Rush, you can spam a lot of Sinister Strikes. It's just so that you don't over, like, the, the other ones on this uh, tier aren't as good. Like for Assassination, this one's really good, because you can go over it when you use Mutilate. You probably won't do it as combat, but it's still useful, I'd say. Um, anyway, for Marked for Death is also pretty good if you get lots of adds. Now, a fight like Horridon is good for that. Um, dads that die quite fast. Uh, I'm trying to think of any other fights that will be like, useful in Siege of Ogumar. I've really, like, I don't raid like I used to. Um, but I'm not really familiar with the fights as much. But anyway, um, for Glyphs, I like to use Redirect, Faint. Is it gives increased duration of faint by two seconds and cloak of shadows, which just makes you take forty percent less damage when you use cloak of shadows. Redirect just lowers the cooldown, which means it that's useful when you got a lot of ads because you can just switch uh, combo points all the time. But I find it useful anyway. There's a, few, a lot of other ones that you could possibly use, but um, it, there's like there's none that increase your DPS by loads that are mandatory or anything. Anyway, so I'm gonna go through. The stat, the uh, stat priority. Um, let me go find. Where is it? Let me close everything. There we go. There it is. Um, but your main, your first stat is agility. That's your main stat you want to go for. Uh, for a second stats you want to go for are uh, hit and expertise cap, which is seven point five percent. I have ten percent hit because of this trinket here. I can't get any lower. I also don't have any better trinkets than that, so I'm at ten percent at the moment, which actually isn't that bad as a rogue because uh, you have. Um, your normal attack still can miss, but you're never going to get to that cap, as you can see it's 16% chance to miss, that's never going to happen, but I suppose being 3% over isn't going to, uh, isn't going to like, isn't wasted stats I'd say, but you know, because all attacks are a lot of damage as a rogue. But um, your next stat, you want to go, really, your main stat you want to go for, I mean secondary stat anyway, is haste, more energy regen, more attack speed, mastery is nice, your mastery, your main turned attacks have 57% chance to grant you an attack that deals damage equal to 120% damage 120% uh, of a main hand attack. And the next stat you want to go for is crit. Um, <coughs> so, um, as you can see over here, these are some cooldowns and some utility spells you have as a rogue. Uh, your main cooldowns as a rogue are, uh, your main cooldowns as a rogue are, uh, combat rogue anyway, are adrenaline lush and killing spree. Killing spree it is, mm, I don't really know how to explain this, but I mean I could just read it out, but that's just, that's boring, you don't really want to step through shadows and you hit basically it's just an AOE move sort of move. Um, I'll show you now right so I'll, I'll do it to this. I was dashing to the three different um, the three different uh, dummies there and I did I didn't actually do that much I only did it doesn't do that much damage but it's uh, it's quite nice it's a uh, it's a nice cooldown. Um, Adrenaline rush increases your energy regeneration by rate by 10 100% and your melee attacks Attack speed by 20%, 15 seconds. 
Uh, also, your global cooldown of your some of your spells. Sinister so strike, revealing strike, evis eviscerate, slice and dice, and rupture reduced by 0 0.2 seconds. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it is quite it is it is significant. Um, now, vanish is a nice cooldown. I'll explain why. Um, every two minutes, you can vanish and get a free um, a free what's that thing called? A free ambush off. And ambush is um, is is a is a good uh, damaging spell. It also gives you two combo points, as I think it does anyway, or is that only for, yeah, two combo points. Um, Blade Flurry, it's not really a cooldown, but it basically, it's one of the main things is uh, combat, it'll basically, it'll strike up to four additional targets for 40% of normal damage, but your energy re energy, energy regeneration is reduced by 20%, which is why haste is quite good, because, I mean, it'll lower the burden of that, I'd say, a little bit, but it's, it's really good for AoE. Uh, for a few targets, anyway. Um, preparation is a nice cooldown. It reduces the. It immediately finishes the cooldown of your sprint, vanish, evasion, and dis dismantle abilities. They're not really cooldown abilities, like damage cooldowns, but they're nice but, um, utility spells, so if you need them in a fight, that's good. <coughs> now, redirect, what it is, is it transfers combo points from one target to another. Let me show you what I mean. So there's three on that, or two on that target, and now there is two on that target. Um, that can be useful if there's molds of ads or. If you need to switch to a different, like if there's more than one boss, you need to switch. Um, now, Shadow Blades is a nice cooldown as well. That makes your all attacks do more damage, and your combo point ge generating abilities have a chance to generate additional combo points, or they do um, generate more combo points. Um, now, here are our utility spells. You have a lot of the rogue. You have Tricks of the Trade, which is kind of like misdirection for hunter. For the next six seconds, all damage you do will be gen like all the threat you do will uh, get transferred to the target of your spell, so your tank basically. Uh, Garo is a silence, kidney shot, and cheap shot are your stuns. Sprint is just a movement speed increase, which is useful. Recuperate is a short, he a small heal, um, it's not huge, it's about 16k per tick. Let's have a look, yeah, which can help out your healers a lot. Now, it lowers DPS if you use it because obviously you're supposed to use your cover points on your eviscerate a lot but it's still quite nice to use um, if you're shard of concealment it, what it does is um, gives everyone in your raid stealth you probably won't, be, probably won't be useful that much in a raid but you never know so it, uh, it's quite nice though uh, dismantle is a disarm, that's nice disarm trap, you can disarm any traps you might have, have to vanish for some of these abilities though by the way as you can see they require stealth um, sap has a cc, gauge is cc uh, blind, which I didn't put on the bar, but blind is like a, um, it's easy, it disorientates the target for up to a minute, it's over there. Um, faint, it reduces um, damage taken from area effect spells by 50%, which is really good. And and, and it also reduces dam all damage taken by 30%, which is also really good. Evasion increases your dodge chance by 100% for 10 seconds, that's also good if you need to tank something. So yeah, rogues have a lot of utility. And that they they bring to a raid. A lot of it's not for other people. It's mainly for the rogue itself. But um, it's all really nice because you can help out your raid a lot just by doing small things as a rogue. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to go through the rotation for a single target, multi target. Um, for your single target, your com combo point builders are ambush from stealth. But like I said, you want at the start of a fight and every two minutes you want to go into stealth and use ambush instead of sinister strike. Anyway. Revealing Strike, you want to keep that up for the de debuff, which I'll explain what that does. An instant strike that deals 160% weapon damage and exposes the target vulnerabilities, increasing the effectiveness of your offensive finishing moves on that target for 35%, or by 35%, and giving your Sinister Strike a chance to generate an extra combo point for 24 seconds. So basically, you put that on first, like, let's say, like, not, like, you've just used Eviscerate, you'll put it back on, and then you'll start using Sinister Strike. Hope, hope you generate more combo points so that you can. Well, I didn't. I didn't generate two at any point. And then you then you use eviscerate, and the eviscerate does more damage. Anyway, um, and then a sinister strike is the filler, like filler combo point builder that you want to be using. Um, now finishing moves are apply, maintain, slice and dice, which you just have to do every. I think it's 36 seconds, 36 seconds, which would get affected by your revealing strikes, that's only effective um, offensive moves. Now, there's one thing here, apply and maintain rupture. Now, rupture 
increases your DPS by about 1 or 2% for combat now. It makes the rotation easier if you leave it out, because you don't have to worry about it. But if you want to min-max, then you, you should use Rupture now. If you don't use it, you're going to lose about a K, 2K um, DPS or something like that anyway. Now, I don't know, it's up to you. If you want to use it, use it. Then if you don't, then don't. Anyway, so then next spell you want to use with combat points is Eviscerate. Just spam Eviscerate with 5 combat points after you keep up your Rupture and your Slicing Dice. And that's that. Um, anyway, on for multi target, less than eight enemies. Turn you, ba you basically want to turn on your blood, fl bl the blade flurry, um, part of knives every twelve seconds. Uh, that is to keep up your deadly poison. And then you want to do your single target rotation, which, if you're using a target ro rotation, blade flurry will transfer the damage to other targets. Um, and for um, eight eight enemies or more, you want to spam. Fan of knives and use Crimson Tempest, which I don't actually have on a bar, do I? Um, oh yeah, I do it's there. Crimson Tempest every, with five combo points. That's uh, it just does damage, AOE damage to everyone, um, and it also makes them bleed more da damage after using it. But anyway, so that's that's it for the rotation. Um, I've already gone through cooldowns, and for I'm gonna go through gems and chance now. Uh, for the gems, if you right. I'll go through the two different sets of gems. If you have below 500 light level, for red sockets you want a deft gem, which is 8 agility and 168 haste. For yellow sockets you want 8 agility and 160 haste again, you want the deft one again. For blue sockets you want glinting gems, which is 8 agility and 160 hit. Um, for uh, if you have above 500 light level, this is where uh, stats like you have more stats from your gear. You can you do you can get different gems instead. You'll have more haste, so this is why, like in red sockets, you can get 160 agility instead. Uh, in yellow sockets, you can get 320 haste. Um, as you can get more haste from that, and you'll have the agility from your gear instead of having to get agility and haste on stat on your gems. Um, and for blue sockets, you can get lightning gem, which is 160 haste and 160 hit. Uh, I guess if you have if you hit capped, you could probably get something else is dead but um, you could probably you probably want to try and get hit cut from your gems and then reforge into other stuff anyway um, now for enchants what you want to get is the 200 agility and 100, 100 crit shoulder enchant for your back you want to get hit or crit depending on what you need for your chest you want to get 80, 80 to all stats for your bleh, bleh, braces you want to get 100, 180 agility for your gloves. I have 170 mastery because my main spec on this is assassination. But you want to get the 170 haste one. Um, for your belt, you want to get the belt buckle to get an extra gem. For your legs, you want to get 285 agility plus 165 crit enchant. For your boots, I went through this in my other video, my assassination one. You want to get the agility and minus speed increase, not the 140 mastery. And for your weapons, you want to get dancing steel. Uh, if you have any professions like enchanting, for example, you can get the rings. But that's that. I'm not going to go through professions in this video. Anyway, that's it for the guide. I'll be doing part two, where I'll be doing a raid boss slash dungeon, probably a raid boss. Um, going through the single target rotation slash multi target depending on the boss, and it'll show you how to play a rogue or combat rogue in a raid environment. So thanks for watching. If it helped out, if it helped you out, leave a like. Um, and I'll see you guys in part two of my combat rogue guide.